Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we saw how the confidence limits shift depending upon the level of confidence that we want to have. So when we started at a confidence interval of 0.95, we saw that we had upper and lower confidence limits equal to 11.40 on the upper side and 9.04 on the lower side. Then we wanted to have a greater level of confidence. We increased it to 99, 99% or 0.99, and that caused the limits to shift because then to be that sure that we're within a certain range that the mean of the population falls within a certain range, we just have to increase those limits in order to allow for that greater level of confidence. But what if we put the confidence level back to 0.95, 95% confident, but now we're going to shrink our sample size. With a smaller sample size, we're not going to be as sure, as confident, that we have the right limits. So to have a confidence level of 0.95 with a smaller sample size, we would expect the limits to increase, to have a wider range where we think the mean of the population will fall. Again, this is all about taking a sample and then inferring from that sample what we think the mean of the population will be. So let's do that. So what we've done now is we've changed the sample size from 100 down to 25 to see what would happen. So we're going to calculate the upper control limit. So we're going to take the mean of the sample and add to that the error, the maximum error, which is gives us the upper, uh, not control, but confidence limit. Control limit is something else. Confidence limit is what we're looking for here. So we take the z-score at the half level of significance. We multiply it times the standard deviation of the population, divided by the sample, the square root of the sample size, which is now going to be smaller. So that means that this is going to be a bigger error. So we end up with 10.22 plus, now we're back to a 1.96 for the z-score. The standard deviation is still 6, but now we divide it by the square root of 25 instead of the square root of 100. So that gives us, uh, let's see here, 1.96 times 6 divided by 5, and we add that to 10.22, and we get 12.57 so this is equal to 12.57 and now we do the same for the lower limit so this is the upper confidence limit and now for the lowest the lower confidence limit that is equal to the mean of the sample minus the z-score at the half level of significance times the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size which is 10.22 minus 1.96 times 5 divided by the square root of 25. Essentially, we've doubled the errors because the square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 100 is 10. Okay, 1.96 times 6 divided by 5 and we're going to subtract that from 10.22 and we get 7. Point, hmm, let's see here, 7.87 is equal to 7.87. So the limits are now going to be 7.87 for the lower um, confidence limit and 12.57 for the upper confidence limit. So you can see that the limits have significantly shifted by taking a smaller sample size. A smaller sample size, we don't have as much confidence that it's representative of the population. The bigger the sample size, the more confident we are that it reflects the population. And so therefore, to have a 95% a level of confidence that the mean of the population falls somewhere between the limits that we set up. We simply have to open up the limits to allow for more variation because we're not as sure, not as confident when our sample size is small versus when our sample size is big. And that is how that works.